All right, welcome to AM Talk. Now, Boko Central Member of Parliament, Mahama Ayariga, on Monday assured an Accra High Court he will prioritize his procedures. The court presided over by Justice Efia Sewa Buche for the second time held that he is not entitled to immunity. The court ruled that a special prosecutor can press charges against the NP. There's more in this report by uh, Joseph Akable. The legislator is said to have used his share of the MP's common fund to procure an ambulance for the Boko Municipal Assembly without following the procurement process. The ambulance purchased in the name of the Assembly, the special prosecutor says, was branded, donated by Honorable Mahama Yariga, MP for Boko Central, to the people of Boko. Mr. Amidu's office says this was to score political points. He is also accused of evading taxes in the importation of vehicles. His lawyers had argued Mr. Amidu, who is beyond the mandatory retirement age of 65, cannot hold office as special prosecutor and therefore not file charges against the MP. They also maintain that crimes alleged to have been committed by the MP cannot be prosecuted by the Office of the Special Prosecutor. Justice Butcher in a ruling said Mr. Amidu had been duly appointed and sworn in as a special prosecutor despite a case challenging his eligibility pending at the Supreme Court. She stated that the court will resist any temptation to rule on a case that the Supreme Court was to deal with. On whether the charges filed are offense the special prosecutor is allowed to prosecute, Justice Butcher said the law setting up the office of the special prosecutor allows for prosecution of crimes captured in any other relevant law, aside from those stated in the act. The MP then pleaded not guilty to all the charges leveled against him as she was granted self-recognizance bill to the tune of 100,000 cities. Justice Butcher reiterated her earlier position that the MP does not enjoy any immunity as an accused person standing trial. Mr. Ayaga informed the court, despite his tight schedule, he will prioritize the court's proceedings. The case has been adjourned to July 8th for case management. So that's uh, Joseph Akable giving us a wrap as to how things unfolded in courts yesterday. Joining me in studio is James Agaga, he's member of parliament for Bursa North, ranking member on defense and interior committee. This is one of the things that we'll talk about, but we'll also talk about security in Ghana today. But he also doubles as one of the lawyers for Mr. Mahama Ayariga. So lots of things to talk about with him. Good morning to you. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Uh, so your client essentially is on bail? Yes, that is what it means. Um, after the ruling yesterday, the court, uh, acting in accordance with the criminal procedure, had to consider bail. Remember that that is a criminal trial. Mm. And in doing so, the court took cognizance of the fact that Honorable Ayaraga is um, the sitting member of parliament for Boko Central mm -hmm. and um, therefore was not somebody who was um, a flight risk. And so the court came to the conclusion that he would be admitted to self-recognizance -recogni bail. He was also asked to deposit his passport and... Um, uh, apply for it any time he wants to travel out of the jurisdiction. So yes, it's on um, bill. Uh, but the ruling was quite interesting. Some of the issues, legal issues that the judge um, dealt with, we are firmly of the view that um, the rulings ought, ought to be tested at a superior forum. Okay. Uh, so we have the instructions of our client and uh, we'll definitely uh, seek the opinion of the three wise men. I'm talking about the Court of Appeal mm. on um, some of the findings of the judge. So, the, so yesterday's ruling, you're going to be appealing yesterday's Absolutely, ruling? Absolutely, yes. Aspects okay. of it. But you had indicated... Aspects of it. Remember that mm -hmm. um, the judge actually acceded to um, some of the... Um, aspects of our applications, those that uh, had to do with the striking out of specific charges. Mm -hmm. So those charges relating to the evasion of taxes, dealing in foreign currency, mm -hmm. were struck out as not falling within the um, remit of the special prosecutor. Mm -hmm. So those have been uh, uh, struck out. In fact, in one of the suits, the second accused person, Mr. Kendrich, was discharged outright. So that's the dealer? 
Yes, is, is he was that, discharged. That's yes, mm -hmm. yes. So, so. So, what what issues are you dealing with now? What what are you faced with? Now, we are faced with um, essentially um, the charge that relates to the, the breach of the procurement uh, law mm. with respect to the uh, procurement of the ambulance. Okay. And um, um, the other charge, which has to do with the use of public office for private gain. Mm. That is also another charge that we, we have to battle. Okay, you're smiling as you're reiterating or as you go over the charges again? Yes, because we are very confident mm. that at the end of the day, um, our client will prevail. We're very confident mm. about that. In the meantime, the issue uh, which has to do with the eligibility of the special prosecutor uh, was dealt with by the court in a manner that was not very satisfactory to us. Mm. The court actually took notice, judicial notice of the pendency of the Ayini suit before the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. uh, which raises issues uh, on the eligibility of the special prosecutor, I mean, his appointment and its constitutionality. Mm -hmm. All right. So we were of the view that once the judge took judicial notice of the pendency of that suit, and we raised it mm -hmm. in our motion, she ought to have, in the circumstances, stayed proceedings and allowed the Supreme Court to pronounce on the constitutionality of uh, the special prosecutor's appointment. Mm -hmm. But that was her choice. But, 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 but that was but her the, choice the, the, to make, the, right? The she court, wasn't necessarily court, bound by that. Well... We think otherwise. We think otherwise. She said yes. She didn't want to overreach the mm -hmm. Supreme Court because she cannot do so. Mm -hmm. Remember that uh, when it comes to constitutional interpretation, that is the exclusive province mm -hmm. of she, the Supreme Court. She obviously Court. didn't have but, the capacity but, 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 to. But, but having said that, mm -hmm. she was of the view that, look, any invitation to stay proceedings would amount to injuncting the special prosecutor. Uh, we don't think so. We disagree with her on that score. And um, other cases... Well, would when, when, when would that be determined? Because a lot uh, also depends on that, the Supreme, Supreme Court's well, interpretation. Well, the Supreme, the Supreme we, Court has gone far with uh, uh, that matter. I think addresses submissions, legal submissions have been filed. Mm. So what is left is for the court to uh, set a date for judgment mm. and so and so a lot of progress has been made in okay. that uh, suit itself okay just finally on this uh, because i want us to do like a recount where we've come from with this matter uh, the the bit about the judge also indicated that she was going to speed this up so it's clear the issue and you're only going to court on mondays correct well so far we have attended court twice uh, in the first instance, we were in court on a Monday. Mm. Remember, that was when um, the court actually directed mm -hmm. that um, our client, Honorable Ayarega, be produced mm -hmm. at 1 p.m. After he had written at 1 and said to all of us that he wasn't going to show up in courts. No, he didn't say he wasn't going to oh, show up in court. Oh, he did say. Court. I listened to him. He I, said yes, he wasn't yes, going yes, to go. Yes, because he, he raised the issue of privilege, mm -hmm. which is an issue that, 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 that has been dealt with in the Constitution itself. The very Constitution which establishes the judicial arm mm. of government. But it's, it's the same Constitution which has granted some limited privilege. Okay, but that's, to, that's to, where to, we to, have to an issue. Of, to members of parliament. That's where we have an issue because, yes, so because it appears it's when you are a witness. That's, well, that's, where, that's where we need interpretation, So, so that, is the, that is the problem. Mm -hmm. That is the problem. If you read Article 118 in isolation, you come to that conclusion. But if you were to read Articles 117, 118, and 122 of the Constitution, you would arrive at a different conclusion. Okay. So, so, so we'll see what it's the not, Supreme Court it's says. Not about, it's not about uh, witness someone says alone. You cannot, whilst an MP is attending parliament or is returning from parliament, okay, serve criminal summons or, if you like, uh, writs on, on, on the member of parliament. Mm. I mean, this is the position of the constitution. And one, two, three is very clear. 
that any act which impedes an MP from the performance of his functions is contempt of parliament. Mm. So you see the cumulative effect of the three articles I have uh, cited is what clothes members of parliament with some amount of immunity. Okay. That doesn't place MPs above the law. We must always underscore that point. Well, but fortunately, so far, you've only had to go to court on Mondays. Yes. And Mondays, we all know parliament doesn't sit. Yes. So, uh, uh, Mr. Ayariga can peacefully go to court. Yes. And on and Tuesdays, we, go back to parliament and, uh, go, uh, that, and do uh, parliamentary work. Uh, right. That's, that's the point we have been uh, uh, trying to well, make. But, but couldn't this, this could have been discussed with a special prosecutor, correct? But I guess because of the relationship, you know, it, it almost uh, is there's no re relationship. No, I don't, I couldn't don't this think... have been discussed uh, with, the, with the prosecutor so no, that they no, can no, go and no, do the No, no, no. Uh, you see, the, the, point is, the point is once charges are filed at the court, the special prosecutor loses control over the proceedings. It is for the registrar of the court mm. to fix dates for hearing. And once the matter comes before the judge, the judge would always refer to his or her diary okay. in, 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 in giving out uh, hearing dates for uh, the courts to appear. But all we have been saying is that, look, let us be mindful about the fact that MPs have certain privileges and the Constitution itself, the framers of the Constitution in their wisdom made provision for those privileges for good reason. Mm. You know, for All good right. reason. And so, and so we're not saying that MPs are above the law. No, no. Okay. No. All right. One of the other things that we'll be discussing in relation to this is Mr. Martin Amidou uh, writing. He, he says silence is golden, but he's had to, to speak now because there are concerns that there's a bipartisan conspiracy against him uh, by MPs. This is the two sides uh, to cripple him from doing his anti-corruption duties. He's insisted he's not going to resign, irrespective of the pressure that comes on him. Uh, we will be joined by Bernard Mona, his national chairman of the PNC. But before that, uh, let's bring you up to speed with how far we have come with Mr. Mahar Mahama Yariga's issue. You're watching the AM Show. Stay with us. <music>
You're watching AM um, Talk. Joining the conversation is with is Mr. Bernard Mona. He's national chairman of the PNC. But I also have Mr. James Agalga. Uh, we've been doing the first bit of the discussion. Good morning to you, Mr. Mona. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Uh, I guess it would be appropriate to ask. Uh, you've been watching. You've been following closely. What's your response? What's your what, what's your reading into everything that's happened so far? Well, I whispered that it is inappropriate to bring me in counsel <laughs> on issue. Did you have a pending case, by the way? Um, not really. Okay. Um, James used to be my lawyer, He's but when he assumed the role of yeah. an MP, he decided to abandon me. Oh. <laughs> I should even ask you, uh, Parliament is in session, yeah. but you, all, you also go to court. Yes, um, w w we have the speaker's... Um, dispensation okay. to mm. practice, I mean, to hold offices of profit. But before you do that, you must apply to the speaker. Mm. You appear before the committee on um, um, holders of office of profit. Okay. You must be able to justify before the committee why, if you are allowed mm. to hold an office of profit, your work as a member of parliament wouldn't suffer. Okay. So we went through the process mm -hmm. and got clearance mm -hmm. to um, uh, practice. That okay. is how come I am able to go uh, to court. But okay. I do that sparingly in, in a manner that wouldn't conflict okay. with my work as a legislator. Okay. Nice. So that's so the Mr. reason why he abandoned me. He's mine. abandoned. But Mr. Time, Mr. Time, Mr. Time, Mr. Time, you for your services on this time, particular case. In, in, in respect of uh, <laughs> my chairman, I, when I became MP, I also had additional responsibility as deputy minister. And so mm. at that moment, it was <coughs> no, no, no. Mm. I just couldn't go to court mm. again because okay. the workload and um, mm. the, the, you know, okay. pressures of Just, just answer my, my other question of is Mr. Mahama Erga paying <laughs> you as, as his counsel? Oh, you know, there is um, a rule, our rule of um, uh, the ethics would not allow me to make those disclosures. You know, uh, lawyer client. I, I don't know about that. Mr. 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 Some confidentiality. Well, I, I also know that <laughs> lawyers <laughs> sometimes do cases pro bono. Yeah. So, Maybe uh, this one is. Yeah, they, but you are giving us your reaction. Um, first, I think that it is good for our uh, the development of our law. Um, law students will be excited to read the case, especially the manner in which it has turned out that um, there is an office of a special prosecutor which office is in itself in dispute mm. as to whether it is yeah. not a usurpation. There, there's no case on the special prosecutor yeah, for yeah. law students to look at, so yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah you know, so, um, so there is um, the office of the special prosecutor itself is an issue of dispute because people think that he's, he's usurping the functions of the attorney general as spelled out in the constitution. And there is another school of thought, and I'm sure that even one aspect of this is in court. And also, even on the age of the special prosecutor and his capacity to continue to occupy office after um, a certain age, it's also in court. So this will be very revealing um, times for students of law who will want to study and to understand what, how our law has developed. Importantly, I think that there are many issues that were brought before the special prosecutor. But of course, he has the prerogative as to which cases he wants to uh, forward to court. Otherwise, the first case that was sent to the special prosecutor had to do with the 5 million contaminated oil. And this came from the OMCs who decided the that bust look, issue. the bust issue. They took the matter to court. And given the manner and the magnitude, the shock that it caused this nation, one was expecting that the special prosecutor will go into that matter with the speed that it requires. Unfortunately, it appears that things that happened several years or otherwise is what he's interested in. And so in this you have an issue with what he's prioritizing? Well, I thought that, look, in this particular instance, looking at the 5 million contaminated bust issue and the amount of money involved compared with what he's chasing now, <laughs> one will say that, look, why do you leave the, the oil um, in, the, in, the, in the basin and then you'll be licking the spoon because there's much oil in the, in the cooking pot and you go and take the spoon and then that is what you are interested in. So we'll be looking at the big cases particularly when they are reported. It is not that you did your own investigations. These are cases that are brought to you and all that you have to do is to test the evidence and then you can go to court. And 
is, is the people had so much confidence, and I'm sure that the media followed up this matter. It just died. So I look at the figures involved in the contaminated issue or, or oil issue, and compared with what is involved in Mama Yariga's issue, and I think that maybe the special prosecutor, as Kweku Baku say, is on a personal uh, um, course with Mama Yariga. That said, let the case go on. And I think that most of the issues, I'm happy at the end of the day that, look, over four charges were leveled against Mama Yariga. Just at one go, they just strikes out three and say that, okay, there is only one issue to contend with. So it means that the special prosecutor did not do his homework well. Is that what, you, what it means? No, that's what a layman's view will be, that he did not do his homework well. He preferred charges that were frivolous and gave the judge a clean opportunity to just say, look, this one doesn't matter, this one doesn't matter, this one doesn't matter, mm -hmm. leaving with one. And even the one, they are now going to go into the full extent as to whether Mama Yarga is culpable or otherwise. So I think that, for me, it is nice. I just think that it's unfortunate that we have come this far. Yeah. And um, the special prosecutor should concentrate on doing his job rather than be writing. Isn't this part of his... Writing. Okay, so you're now zooming in Yeah, into, writing uh, and telling the public that people want to force you. Well, but if that is how he feels. So do, do your job. No, no, that. see. I understand. See, anyone that intends to interfere with his job, if it's a member of parliament or otherwise, you know what to do. You report to the person. You know that it constitutes obstruction to your job. So why are you not applying what is available to you? within the legal remit, and you are out there writing. You yeah, are not he, a serial writer. He's always been a writer. No, so you stop writing. That's why you have well, been but, given but, a job. But, but, and in but, parliament, but when he, he, was being, he was being vetted, he stated that he was going to cease with writing because now he has a mandate, and he could, he could not go into the public realm to be doing the things. He has to concentrate on his job. Or it is a case that he's failing in dis discharging his duties, so he's resorting to the media again. Mm. Okay. That's, that's your interpretation to what he has done. But I have to ask you, Mr. Gaga, uh, plus Mahama Yariga, it will be nine persons that the special, special prosecutor is interested in within parliament. Are you part of the, of the nine? <laughs> no. Okay. I, 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 I have been appearing at the offices of the special prosecutor as um, a lawyer who goes there to represent um, clients. Other clients in parliament? Um, like I said, I don't want to make uh, those disclosures, um, whether or not their clients from Parliament. Uh, it's, it's, it's not so a, you've been going my to place. The, you've been going to the to, special to, prosecutor to, to represent clients. To, okay, yes. except that you won't tell, you no, won't tell the, us the if they are MPs of, or not. The identities of oh, my well, I'm not clients. asking you to name names. I'm not no, but the they, identities they, will be they, known they, in they, court they, if they are. Yeah, <laughs> if, they, if they are arraigned mm. before, uh, before court, court, we'll get to know them. The identities will be known. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to my earlier question yes, then. Yes. Uh, there are nine people that the special prosecutor is interested in in Parliament. He's written extensively. Uh, just a bit of what he has said is that the two sides have come together to make his work very difficult. Is, is that, tell us about the conspiracy, you know, that kind of theory that's ongoing in Parliament. Well, first of all, uh, let me say that there is no conspiracy uh, against the special prosecutor in Parliament that I am aware of. So that needs to be placed on record. Uh, secondly, the special prosecutor himself has made it abundantly clear that he has not pressed charges against nine members of parliament. I think he's been very categorical on that in his own uh, press release. Mm, but you've been appearing and representing some people. Uh, representing some people, clients. The identities of my clients for now is confidential. I, I cannot look. These are time added uh, 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 rules of. Um, we understand you. Know, you. Yes, our, the, our etiquette will not allow me to be doing. I'm just saying. I'm just saying stage. that he's he's not interested in. Uh, he, yes, he hasn't yes, shown interest yes. in so, others. Yes, yet yes. you so are appearing and representing others. Yes, he's made it very clear that he's looked into some. Um, issues involving other members of parliament other than Anwabula Yarega. Mm. But for now, only one member of parliament has been arraigned before court, and that member of parliament is Anwabula Yarega. Mm. The others 
who have appeared before him, going by what the special prosecutor himself has put out there, I mean, it's in the nature of investigations. But when you are investigating a matter, it doesn't necessarily mean that the, those who are being investigated would end up in court. Mm. But it's the beginning of a process. It's the beginning of a process. That is correct. So, so what the majority leader actually said in parliament was that, listen, some other members of parliament uh, are before the Office of Special Prosecutor for some investigations. Because before the special prosecutor uh, commenced those investigations, as required by law, and 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 and, and you know, in line with constitutional dictates, you would have to write to the speaker mm. for 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 clearance, or for members of parliament to be allowed to attend upon the special prosecutor for the commencement of investigations, and then, then that brings to the fore the issue of. Uh, uh, immunity and privilege. So, so at all material times, the special prosecutor himself recognizes the fact that members of parliament have some privilege or immunity. And so he knows what to do. He, he, he would normally write to the right honorable speaker. And, and, and it is those same privileges we have been discussing over the period that, listen, the institution of parliament must be protected. And, and, and the, the historical antecedents to how the whole uh, concept of parliamentary privileges evolved mm. points to the fact that, I mean, look, the institution of parliament needs to be protected from an overbearing executive. You understand? An, an so, overbearing executive. Don't we have uh, members of the executive also in, the, in parliaments? Well, ours is a hybrid. So you, yours, uh, no, no, no. Yours ours is, is not a, clear. No, no, no. Ours, ours is, is a hybrid. Confused one. <laughs> ours is Thank a hybrid. But, 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 but. So you can never have an overbearing executive. No, you can't. Can, really. You can. You it's can. One, when it's they, only when the minority that will feel that. When they decide that. to target the minority, <laughs> when they decide to target the minority <laughs> and to silence critical <laughs> uh, minority legislators with all manner of criminal investigations, parliamentary immunity and privilege comes in handy mm. to protect the institution of parliament a multi-party democracy. It goes back to the interpretation that the Supreme Court will put on it. I guess we're all yeah, waiting absolutely. and watching. Yeah, but, but I, these are matters that are very clear and, and, and um, you know, uh, elsewhere in the world, in the Commonwealth, these are time honored principles that have, in a very large way, uh, helped to, uh, if you like, uh, the, 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 the democratic dispensations mm. to survive. Even when you're facing a criminal charge? Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the rules were formulated, the rules were formulated in respect of criminal charges as well as civil. So the constitution is clear that when a member of parliament is on his way to parliament or is returning from parliament... You are always on your way don't, and don't, always don't, returning. Don't, don't, don't <laughs> serve him or her with criminal summons, mm. the law is very clear. But we need to amend that portion. Yeah, but but we need to amend that portion. Because don't let us make mistakes. Yeah. Because, no, don't let because us if make I, mistakes. at what point do you serve him? No, no. Because if, if if an MP walks into his bathroom and say that. I went into my bathroom with the intention of going to parliament. It means that you cannot serve me. No, if I no, am in a restaurant no, having lunch, <laughs> I'll tell you, you that him. I just came out of no, parliament no, to have to lunch and an, go back. No, if you want to serve an MP so it, with it the becomes, summons, you do that on Monday. But that reminds uh, on me. On Sunday. That on I remember Monday. But there are Monday. instances you sit on... In, 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 we, don't in, in, we don't sit all the time. No, but there are instances you sit on Monday. on vacation. Very soon, Parliament will So be we have to wait for you. So if you have committed an offense against somebody, don't we have to wait for you to go on a, a, a break before you we see, can serve you. I have to ask you, Mr. Agalda, just before you, know, you go see, on. You know something? Mr. Yariga insisted that he had not been served. And I wonder why he didn't raise that in courts. Yes. So uh, uh, on the Monday, when the orders, of the orders were uh, made by the court, Directing Honorable Ayarga to appear at 1 p.m., Honorable Ayarga had not been served with any summons. You didn't and I had the occasion course. to make the point that at that material moment, there was nothing before the court, and the court ought to have 
um, first of all, informed itself on the issue of service but of at, the at, summons. But at that time, uh, that morning, your colleague, uh, Edu Jitamaklu, was in court. He was in court. But he didn't raise that issue, did he? No, the issue of service. Yeah. The, but, but it is for the court itself to always look at its record. Before you assume jurisdiction over an accused person, the, 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 you, you must satisfy yourself that the accused person has been served with the summons. Yeah, but, but, but on this but occasion... The, but the defense would use this... No, 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 no. On this occasion, even before the summons was served on Mr. Ayaraga, the court ordered in an unusual manner that Mr. Ayaraga be produced in court. Because it wasn't an issue. It, it was an issue. It was an issue, and that is the point I'm making, that the court itself must always be sure that there is proof of service before the court continues. Because if, 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 the court, if the court doesn't satisfy itself that there is proof of service of its processes on accused persons, mm. whatever proceedings ensues, would be null and void. Yeah, but you could have raised it. Well, if well, it was, well, you would have well, simply the just that, the point told is the judge no, that no, we haven't the been point served. Is that, we don't know about this the case. The point is that Honorable Ayaraga himself was in Parliament. On the Monday morning, he raised the issue of privilege. The Speaker of Parliament had to deliver a ruling because he raised the issue of privilege. And so, before the ruling, we had word that the court had ordered that Ayaraga appears. Now, as a law-abiding citizen, as somebody who didn't want to appear to be disrespectful to the authority of the court, even notwithstanding the fact that he hadn't been served, we decided that no, okay. we would appear. So, contrary to um, the perception that Honorable Ayaraga all along uh, has had the intent to run away from uh, justice, you know, you must and you, you look at the, 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 the his conduct in the matter, even when. It was very clear he hadn't been served. We could have decided that we wouldn't attend upon the court, appear subsequently and file applications to uh, quash the orders the court had made. But we said, no, we are not running away from justice. We are only insisting that the Constitution be upheld. That's all. Mm. So we went That's there the voluntarily. It was only when the Honorable Ayaraga arrived in court that the court bailiffs now took advantage of his presence in court and served him with the summons. Did you notify the judge that this is what had happened? But the judge knew at all material uh, uh, times. It's interesting. Because there was no proof of service on, 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 on the docket. Yeah, but, but I'm, I'm just saying that you could have raised it. No, this, once, this works once, in your once he arrived in court mm. and the bailiffs took advantage and served him with the summons. He had been served. Yes, in any case, you must remember that he actually moved from parliament to the pressings of the court. Yeah. On your way from? Parliament. Mm -hmm. So under normal circumstances, the service on him. Shouldn't have. Absolutely. <laughs> but but, <laughs> but we, we, we decided to be flexible. OK. Because, All right. because, because the Honorable Ayaraga is very law abiding okay. and respects yeah. the authority Thank of you the court. Thank you very much, Mr. Agaga. Mr. Mona, we, the people, shouldn't allow parliaments the two sides to put their heads together to cripple the work and effort of the special prosecutor. We called for him. We called for this office. Well, I, I, I didn't call for it. I have my reservations. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. Because I think, I think honestly that the attorney general is clothed with authority to be able to do his job. And I think that under President Nana Kufado, when he was attorney general, his office was used to do prosecutions, criminal prosecutions into the past administration. And some people were actually incarcerated. They suffered the law. So the law, as we have it, I think that the Office of the Special Prosecutor is a spend force. They have come to add to the public expense. You sound like you have an issue with this office. No, no. I, I, I have always stated that time without number. And that if the special prosecutor, given the powers that we have given him, decides or becomes a corrupt person, you can imagine the number of cases that will go to him and he will decide that he will not level charges because that person is clothed with more than enough authority to be able to take a matter on or not. It has happened in other jurisdictions where I lived before, like in Kenya, and you will see that, look, the special prosecutor or the person responsible for these things eventually becomes sometimes even richer than the state.
because big, big businesses will be involved in financial impropriety. And at the end of the day, it has problems. So I have my personal reservations about the office of the special prosecutor. That not said, I also think that, look, no one should stampede his work. Let him go on to do his work. But if there are issues of legality surrounding his person and the office, those things must be challenged. And so it is strange to me that he will come and be telling us that there is a conspiracy of some sort coming from Parliament. You and find that strange? I find that strange because if there is any conspiracy, there are institutions that he can report to. Oh. Yes, there are institutions that he can report to. He can report to the police for investigations. So the fact that he has failed to do that should mean that he himself should be investigated as to whether he's telling the truth or not. <laughs> That's my view on the matter. Very interesting, your views on this matter. I totally didn't expect it. Uh, so when are you going back to court, Mr. Agaoga? Uh, We're back in court in uh, three weeks for um, the commencement of um, case management. Uh, that is the state where um, the prosecution, of course, will be required to make disclosures of the evidence they intend to rel rely upon mm. to prosecute the matter. Okay, but this is on so a Monday. Yes, it's on a Monday, mm. yes, it's on a Monday. It doesn't interfere with parliamentary work? Uh, no, parliament normally doesn't sit on Mondays. Mm. Okay. Yes. All right, I want us to talk about security because you, you, said, yeah, you also said on there. I thought I saw Kennedy at Japan in the videos you are showing. And yes. I saw James Agalga at uh, the back. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe he should answer on <laughs> record now because I'd asked but, him off air. But, but, but why? Uh, I don't know Japan is a <laughs> member of parliament. It no, could I'm, be part of the conspiracy. I, I'm, 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 yes. No, it's okay, a member now. of parliament. <laughs> uh, you just saw a while ago on the uh, yes, that's my, uh, screen, uh, his Ayaga. former uh, presidential Hassan candidate. Ayaga, who is a, a, a senior brother to yes. Mahama Ayarga. Yes. So family ties. Okay. But 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 honourable Kennedy at Japan. Okay, that one will be business ties. Um, also went to court on a different mission. Yes, we. I we, can see him there. We came from Parliament and uh, met. I think he had his own issues at the mm -hmm. court to, to mm -hmm. attend to, uh, but 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 he sh expressed solidarity. Why? A colleague member of Parliament. Well, but you should know that um, um, uh, Kennedy at Japan so is, has always been opposed to the office of yes, the special so, prosecutor. So, so I'm not so surprised anyway. Maybe maybe that's the bipartisan conspiracy right there. <laughs> 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 Let's uh, spend uh, the rest of our time talking about security. Uh, you sit on the defense uh, committee. Have you met with those who took part in that operation uh, to to get the Canadian women um, released? No, we haven't uh, met them. Um, we are yet to be briefed by the National Security uh, Minister on the issue that has to do with the kidnapping of the Canadians as well as the three Takradi uh, girls. So all the information we have at our disposal as um, what we have stumbled upon, uh, you know, from social media and um, the media in general. Okay. And from our own sources. Okay. But, but we are yet to have that encounter with the minister to give us an update on um, how the operation itself was conducted. Mm. Uh, whether or not there was some foreign collaboration. I, is that even important? Why not? Because, you know, Why we not? always need support. Why not? Whether we accept it or no, not. But, but and I've cited the Melcom collapse, for instance. No, we brought in no, foreigners to help us. No, 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 no. You and, see, and, generally... And, and it was admitted that they helped. Yes. Generally... Well, this, generally, is, this is vehemently being denied. Generally, you know? issues that have to do with security is also about collaboration. Locally and internationally. So you have the Interpol... You have other countries within the ECOWAS uh, uh, sub-region. They collaborate all the time. And so there is nothing wrong with collaborating with foreign partners when it comes to uh, dealing with security issues in our country. Is there something day wrong day when, you haven't, when they haven't helped you and you've stated that they haven't helped you in an, in an operation? Why do we seem to have an issue with that? In this country, we're all aware that the Canadians actually sent experts with a view to uh, assisting their Ghanaian 
and counterparts to rescue the girls. Did that happen or not? What do you know? Yeah, that, that, that is a fact. It's a, it's a notorious fact. That it happened? Yes. So, so if there was some collaboration, what is wrong with making the admission that, listen, there was some collaboration between us and our Canadian partners? In any case, currently, are we not collaborating with uh, other countries with a view to rescuing the Takradi girls? What's wrong with making the admission? What's wrong, fundamentally? So I don't see the head and tail of this whole uh, attempt to deny that there was some uh, help or assistance from our. So your media. submission essentially is that the information minister didn't tell us the truth. When Absolutely, he said that I mean there are so many uh, 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 things the information minister said, which is not a true account of what actually transpired. For instance, the information minister was quick to uh, tell Ghanaians that the kidnappers did not demand a ransom, which turns out to be false, because subsequent uh, evidence uncovered shows clearly that the, 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 the kidnappers demanded a ransom of $800 million. They were, they, were, they were in touch with the families of the kidnapped girls. But the information minister told the good people of Ghana that they didn't demand a ransom. And when he did that, it is very obvious to me now that he sought to play politics with the issue and make it look like the, 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 the motive for kidnapping was probably politically motivated in a way. Because if you kidnap without demanding a ransom, it could be that uh, maybe there were some other motives. And remember that they have tried had this particular government to implicate the national chairman of the NDC. So was it, was it, was it part of the plot? I'm beginning to uh, establish the there. connection between what the Minister for the Information said and, 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 and what the new patriotic party has been trying all this while. Why, why would the Information Minister to, put his face and image and integrity I think so we should be asking him to render an, an unqualified apology to the good people of this country. Because subsequent information and evidence shows that the people demanded a ransom. He said there was no ransom. No ransom was demanded. There was no payment. You, you, you've been there before as Deputy, yes, uh, yes. As deputy yes. Interior Minister. That is the whole reason why... Aren't you briefed before you, you, know, you, you also go I ahead and... I have a problem. And, and could I, it, be, you see, could this, it be that this, the briefing was what he presented to us? But you see, on that occasion, you notice that the Minister for National Security was seated at the press conference. The Director CID was present. I'm sure the National Security Coordinator and all those who... Uh, uh, manager was security were mm. present. But he the also made reference to the, the fact that listen, he had the authority no, to speak. The Minister for Information had no business leading the press interaction. He had no business whatsoever. Look, why? When we were in office, we used to engage with the media. And any time we had to address issues that were very that, that were technical and sectoral in nature, the Minister for Information would only open the discussion and allow the, the, the sector minister to handle the different issue. Different administration, different strategies. But that is why we're having challenges now. That is why we're having challenges now. Mr. Mona, what's your take on this? Well, I think that my, my friend and brother, who happens to be your former colleague um, from Joy FM, um, is over indulging in partisanship in matters. How is that? In He's matters, a commission minister. In matters at the ministry. And it appears that at any time he is speaking, the partisanship comes out of him more than doing state service. And I would want to appeal that he should mind his record. Because partisanship aside, the nation is also very important. And his personal integrity is on the line. And so in most instances when you are making communications, you should be mindful of the dent that it brings to you as a person and what society will even put across. In this instance, I think that the minister, to be charitable, told a great lie. He took a big lie that there was no collaboration whatsoever. All of us do know 
that at one point in time, the Canadians sent some people to come into Ghana. Yeah, but what's your evidence, really? Please, please. They sent people to come into Ghana. They didn't come here for honeymoon. Never. They didn't come here for honeymoon. They came here because some two of their own had been kidnapped in your so country. So why hasn't the Canadian embassy issued why a must statement? They, they are, they are they major interest, their major interest. Their major interest is the rescue and life of their people. They have achieved that. So whatever domestic things you are involving them in, they may decide to keep quiet. But in reality, they send down people. Government admits that people came down. And the signals we are picking is that the kidnappers actually use the ladies' phones to make a call to the parents demanding the ransom. And they contacted even their insurance company that, look, this is what has happened to these girls who are taking insurance cover under you. What can you do? All those information, the Minister for Information pretend that there was no collaboration. When they came here, why? We all know what gadgets can do. So it enabled them to trace closer to the location of these people. You don't want to say all the things that you come across. So gadgets that you use, if your location is on, can easily be traced by the experts mm -hmm. that you are located here. So for security reasons, would you want to tell the people everything you know? And, and so, and so, there was collaboration. You don't elaborate on it. We are happy to have collaborated with our partners to be able to get to this matter. We are happy that at the end of the day, we rescued them. You should say that they, no one will take a knife and come and put on your throat, even if they do so. You should be able to state this as a fact. But to come and say there was no collaboration and whatever, I mean, you beat your own intelligence. You are not deceiving the people of Ghana. Now it's turning out that there was ransom demanded. It turned out that the parents were willing to even offer a certain amount. So personally, how do you feel when these revelations are coming out? Mm. So I think that there is something untold. What I don't agree is what I think the Nigerian High Commissioner is doing now. He said, look. Are you making reference to the statements? That he's uh, yes, I, I'm, yeah, I'm linking okay. it up in a, in a manner. That when there is a crime, you are looking for party colors or national colors. Some people have come into Ghana. Nigerians are enjoying to come to Ghana to do business. Ghanaians are in Nigeria to do business, for instance. And so no state will sponsor an individual to come and commit the kind of crimes that you associate with their citizens. So when there is a crime, treat the people as, as just persons who have committed the crime. So how, how do we now, describe now them? Because you, your identity is not necessarily linking you. We have you. arrested... If you you're have, a Ghanaian, you're Ghanaian. You have arrested Adibola. I don't know who Adibola is, so nobody should come and accuse me of mentioning his or her name. You have, you have arrested Adibola. What's wrong with saying Adibola is Nigerian? And then when you begin Togolese. to say, you know what you are doing, you are inciting society against Nigerians. But how is the story told elsewhere? I mean, let's, let's so, look for best so practices. I'm saying that I'm, if CNN is reporting a story and the person is Ghanaian, they will simply say the person is Ghanaian. And I think that is the stereotyping we are doing. In this particular instance, where I want to link my conclusion to, is that some people have been arrested. Deal with them as criminals. We are looking for which party they belong to. So this person has been active with the NPP. This person is active with the NDC. And it's turning out that it is now an accusation of, oh, that robber is an NDC person. That robber is an NPP person. He worked for the Delta Force. So at the end of the day, you see, the two, quote, big political parties are now engaged in a battle of where does this criminal belong to? And so if that criminal belongs to NDC, it means that it's not a crime. Or if it belongs to MPP, he belongs to MPP, it means that there was no crime. I see where you're going with this. You understand? So I am saying that deal with the people according to the crime that they have committed and stop this pettiness that we are always engaging. Well, he's, he belongs to one of the groups. Yes, you see. So why do you try to identify them and own them? It is important to establish the identities of the kidnappers. Why? Because strenuous attempts have been made by this government to, to, to as it were, brand, brand the leader of our party, the national chairman, as a kidnapper. Is it? They have, they have... And they, they have, coming from they a certain have, points. And they coming from somewhere. And I don't want to take you there because this matter is in courts. 
Absolutely. So the politicization of crime didn't start with us. If you uh, try to you see why I said that criminalize, the engagement of criminalize, this, on, on, criminalize on the this leader. so-called vigilante, um, uh, what do we call it, mediation by the National Peace Council is a, it's a waste yeah. of our resources. <laughs> so you see, if you try to criminalize the leader of a party as being a kidnapper, and we have irresistible evidence to connect those who perpetrated the recent uh, kidnapping of the uh, Canadian girls in Kumasi to this party, the governing party, we will do so with alacrity. You know, I we will do so with alacrity. Can we clarify because, one thing? Because, because the identities of those perpetrators, in a way, goes to exonerate the leader of the opposition, NDC. In 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 in, that, that in, 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 in the eyes of what the the right thinking members of our society. It's good, it's good you're a lawyer. Let's clarify something. Um, when it's crime, you can as in the group backing the national chairman. I, I find it a bit difficult because you you're seeking to say that he's not a kidnapper, and I'm not in any way saying that he's a kidnapper. But I thought that you let the law take its course instead of try to defend him because he's an we will individual him. We and if there are charges preferred against him he has to deal with it by himself as an individual when, as it, is, of when, when it is obvious that the government is using the CID the coercive power that it has at its disposal to harass our national chairman, we will defend him. What, you don't believe in the rule of law any we, longer? We, we believe in the rule of law, but we're saying that the laws in themselves must be applied in a manner that is not arbitrary. If you apply the laws in a manner that is abusive, we will talk. So it is, it is, it is, it is our fundamental right to speak out against all forms of oppression so, and tyranny. Okay. We're saying so that the state is find... using the police to unnecessarily harass our chairman. You don't expect us to fold our hands and sit down. So, we now, will, so we now, when we find, into this. now when we find criminals, yes. the NDC is going to sit down and look for their real identity in terms of where they belong, no, no, all in no, an no, effort no, to no, prove no, that no, their no, national no, chairman no, is no, not a kidnapper. Make no mistake. <laughs> you have said, no, sorry, government communicators have said, that Ufusuampofu should be blamed for the recent spate of kidnappings in this country. Well, we know that he's been investigated yes. for that. Yes, whilst the investigations are ongoing, they try to poison public opinion inside the public against the NDC and our national chairman. And so when arrests have been made and we have irresistible evidence to which links the perpetrators to the current government, say to Mba, has openly confessed in an interview that he is an MPP card-bearing member and has supported the party uh, 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 in the Kumasi area. I mean, these are facts that cannot be, mm. cannot be controverted. You expect us to sit down? Mr. Mona, we I can sit down in those circumstances. Matter, but I have to give you 30 seconds. Based on what he said, what have you got to say? And then we'll close this conversation. Oh, I, I, I think that it's, you know, it's an exercise in futility. And I just wanted to commend the NDC General Secretary when the national chairman reported to the police and he issued a statement that party members should stay calm and that they were dealing with that. I thought that that was a matured way to go about it so that the investigation can go on. Listening to James, I don't get that impression that they back the General Secretary statement because the General Secretary issued a statement when there was an attempt to mass people to the police headquarters. And you do know what these things have led into. In the past, people who say that decapitate others because they are from certain tribes were, were, were seen as heroes. But in this particular matter, the general secretary issued a statement asking people to stay away until they should wait for the party. And I thought that that was so much work, so as to allow our systems to work and function properly. I may disagree because I have been to the police and I've seen that their mode of investigation is sometimes horrible. They invite you and say, come at 10 o'clock. You get to the police, they will not attend to you till maybe later in the evening. So if you are not ready to take me through interrogation, why come and waste my time? 
and caused all manner of panic in society. So in that direction, you will see that a lot of people will be thinking that, look, you are doing this in order to serve a certain partisan angle. And that is where these challenges come. But I think that all, all in all, um, if we are able to take away crime, from the partisanship, from nationality, will be able to deal with it much more. In this case that I talked about the Nigeria, if the Nigerians decide that, look, okay, since you are accusing us, we are going to come full force to come and also protect our own, then it becomes country versus country. And I don't think that that is what we want to do. So I think that um, let's take away crime, deal with it as crime, so that if I am found offending the law, Deal with me according to the mm. law. Don't bring my party or my church inside. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much. But I understand that you've got the demonstration coming up. I wonder what you're demonstrating against. Well, um, it's part of the issues we are demonstrating, the height of insecurity. and um, the you, feel, you feel insecure? Absolutely. I absolutely. I don't, I don't go home walking straight. I go home walking in angles. <laughs> really? I go home. And how, I did you, how did you come to the studio this morning? And you can see that I came late. You can see that I came in a because little Because you feel insecure. No, you must, you must watch your back. You have to check and be sure. Is that, that, is that where we've got into? That is where we have got into. Look, just this weekend, a brother and a friend who happens to be the NDC constituency chairman for Dafyama Buse Isa, returning from a funeral between Sago and Dang, less than five minutes drive, was shot in the head. No arrest has been made. No arrest has been made. Over this weekend, the young man has been married. Mm -hmm. yeah. Only 45 years. And many others. I'm saying young man because I'm older than him. Many others. You're older than 45? Oh, yes, of course. Very soon I'll be going on retirement. Mm -hmm. You understand? So many others have suffered, including your colleagues in the media. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, even when you report a crime, the threats that come to you, and of course, the increase in economic hardship. But I these things that you, you outlined, they are not new. Um, but must they continue? Because they are not new, they must continue so that the people of Ghana will suffer. Mm. So that is why we are doing Warukunye demonstration in Takuradi. On Warukunye. The Warukunye. Oh, in Takuradi. Why Takuradi? Um, we have been moving around. Don't forget that we did the Agwe War demonstration in Accra. We did um, um, the demonstration in Tachiman. And now we are moving to Takuradi. Ooh. From Takuradi, we may end up in Kumasi. Okay, so when? Do you have a date? 27th of uh, June, okay. 2000. You've informed the police? Oh, absolutely. Okay. You do know that on that one. We will mm. not, we will not Is the NDC helping you out? Um, they, they have subscribed to the Coalition for National Sovereignty. They are in opposition, they will. No, they have subscribed to it. And you know, there is a difference. Other political parties decide to fully subscribe, and the NDC is one of them that has subscribed. We have the UFP and others, and we have individuals and also civil society organizations participating. And I'm happy that uh, people see that our society is not safe. There is unprecedented insecurity in our country. There is untold economic hardship. Unemployment has reached a crescendo, and all these call for citizens to So rise. the MPP doesn't feel any of the things that you've outlined? Well, there are some members of the MPP who have joined in some of our demonstrations. Okay. Well, I, 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 I hope... 30 seconds, we have to go. This demonstration attempts are not being made to, um, as it were, thwart your effort. Because mm -hmm. in the Upper West region, sometime last week, I read some correspondence which was very disturbing. The um, regional secretary of our party in the Upper West region notified the police about uh, the, 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 their intention to demonstrate. You mean lawyer Charles? Yes, against the uh, government for <coughs> its failure to commission the WA regional hospital, which is almost, very co com almost complete. You know. Now, the regional police commander actually asked the regional secretary to, to, to write to the regional minister and seek his consent. I think we will not accept No, no, no. I think that that means that we that police not, officer is not, not, is not we, well, full well, in control of what the law is. You are working with a public order not, act and you say that we should go, we go and write to a regional accept, minister. We will not accept that. Uh, that is the extent to which this government seeks to undermine certain fundamental human rights that they, whilst in opposition, fought very hard 
to maintain and preserve. Thank you very we much, gentlemen, for your time this morning. I wonder uh, what a police officer's uh, uh, um, advice would be that is we have applied. It's linked to the government. I, 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 I yeah. But thank you very much, gentlemen, for your time. I, thank I, you very much. I, I hope to see you yeah. in the Takradi <laughs> on 27th. We have a, we have a correspondent. No, I hope in, to see in, you because I know that you yourself, you are not safe. <laughs> As a journalist, you understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> So join, may, may, join. May, which secondary school did you go to, by the way? Um, the best secondary school in Ghana, Laura Secondary School, Laura. and I ended in Tamale Secondary School, which is for. So Laura and Tamale. Tamale Secondary, secondary so School. So which one is the best? Um, Laura okay. followed by Tamale. <laughs> Mr. Gaga, which, which secondary school did you go to? Nabia. Nabia. Uh, Derek, check for me a call. If they <laughs> if they made it to the National Science and Maths Quiz. Well, oh, no, uh, Science and Maths Quiz yes. cannot determine the bestness of a student. Oh, I haven't the said so. The last time I, I checked, when we took our best uh, uh, school to is it Brazil, um, the best science and math school. And then they got there. They gave them tools to go and work. And there they were. They could not apply the science that they have. Why, why, why is he defending? I, no, haven't, no, because, I haven't put it on you. Because the best that. science school in Ghana is Laura Secondary School. Everyone knows that. Okay. We won't agree on this one. So let's leave it here.